And I knew that was off. Come on, somebody. I knew it was off. Because I can't find anywhere where heaven looks like that. And I'm going to tell you, heaven ain't all black either. And so, so uh, I, I told my wife, we left the service. I said, I never want to go back there again on purpose. <laughs> I learned to say never, say never. So about, about a month later, I get a phone call from the pastor. And sure enough, he wants me to come a, do a Sunday through a Wednesday. I said, oh, Jesus. So I really prayed about it. The Lord says, go. I said, all right. So I told my wife, we're going. So I said, Lord, you got to give me a method. So I dressed up like a homeless guy. I mean, I put on the costume, everything, the, the beard, the whole, and I went to a costume shop. We did it right. I didn't even tell the pastor. I started to do it here, but I, I said, nah. So that's dropping a bomb, let me tell you. And so my wife put me out a, a half a mile from the church, well, four or five blocks, a long, a half a quarter of a mile, whatever. It was a long walk. <laughs> and so I'm walking down the road with a trash bag and a, all this. And I had a sign that said, hungry and homeless, help me. And I showed up an hour before church started. So people started showing up, fasted up, prayed up, hiked up, dressed up. Right. To hear the evangelist. They told me, get off the property. <laughs> they said, we don't want your type here. And one, one man said, we'll feed you, but you can't come inside. Wow. Two people came out to beat me up. The rumors started. Oh, let me tell you what manifested. The spirit of gossip manifested. And the rumors started traveling that I was breaking into cars. They were going to call the law. <laughs> and, and the pastor came out by this time, walked right up to me and said, what can I do for you, buddy? I said, you can go back inside and sing another song, sir. And he saw it was me. But what, stay with me now. This is not an indictment against the church. He said, oh, my God. <laughs> he said, you rascal. Now stay with me. So I came inside. I started trying to hug people. They started pulling away from me. One man ran out of the church. Wow. Uh, some friends of ours, and, and I'll tell you later who that is, drove from Tifton. I saw the Georgia tag pull up. And I'd never seen them before up till then. And we'd been helping their son with some problems they he's having with drugs and, and getting him in a place. And he was, he, God really touched that young man. But I went up to them and they ran from me. <laughs> and I went up to him and put my arm around him in the church. And I whispered in his ear. I said, I want you to go sit on the front row next to my wife. He said, oh, my God. And so I got up and I opened the Bible and this is what I said. Who is my neighbor? I ripped the beard off. I didn't have to say nothing else. Because at that point the Holy Spirit hit that place and this is what happened. A spirit of repentance hit. Because let me tell you something. Listen, everybody's been hurt. I didn't, and here's what I told him. I was not representing a person who scams you under I-75. Right. On the, on the street, listen, we know they're out there. They're not for real. It's just a scam. I was representing the spiritually hungry and the spiritually homeless around America. Right. Who is that? That's the policeman. Wait, hold on. That's the lawyer. That's the doctor. That's the nurse. That's the person at Walmart. That's the person you've been working with for 20 years. Come on, those are the people we're around all day long. But why are we not seeing those people? I'll tell you why. Because we don't see through the eyes of God. The Bible says when Jesus did the church thing, then he stepped into the next level. I'll prove it to you in that verse because look what he said. When he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion because he began seeing the reason why they were like they were. Right. He looked past the person and went to the problem. Me and my wife were just in Gadsden, Alabama. Oh boy, what a church that was like. I, I, 
the Pentecostal buns and maybe some of you don't know what that is because you're new in the church. <laughs> we were at a restaurant eating at Cracker Barrel. Look at me. And the waitress got everything wrong. Keisha, was I right? She did. Listen, I have a pet peeve about keeping my glass full when I'm drinking and having lunch. So I, last night I ordered two or three glasses sometimes when I just, that way I don't have to fool with it. I just ordered me three. I don't have to worry about it, you know? So I have to ask. I just got them. I do it up front. But this waitress got everything wrong. She got the order wrong. I thought, dear God, is there anything else she can get wrong? Look, I had every reason to give her the business. I could have probably justified it. But you know what I did? I said, Lord, show me what's wrong with her. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Be careful what you ask God to do. And so the Lord spoke to my heart and says, call her over and ask her what bill it is she's trying to pay. I said, Lord, I said, Lord can I ask her something else? Maybe I can ask her it another way besides that. I didn't know what she would say. I mean, she may be trying to pay off some big thing. I don't know, you know. And so... I called her over and I said, um, what bill is it you're trying to pay? And she said, what? I said, what bill? She said, my car payment. And I said, I said, I don't think I even asked her how much it was. I just said, it's paid. And she almost, she couldn't believe it. She was a single mom. She had just been forced to drop out of nursing school, move back in with her parents. She's working two jobs. The day job was at a nursing home changing bedpans. And the night job was working and probably waiting on a bunch of Christians at Cracker Barrel. And brother, she was under it. And I said, paid. She said, oh, she couldn't believe it because they were about to come repo her car. Come on, you know what? So let me tell you what. I, I don't know. All I can tell you is we just paid it. And then my wife started crying because God had given her a vision as an outreach of our ministry called Daughters of Zion, where we reach out and minister to single moms. And she was the first fruits of that because we not only paid her car payment, the Lord laid on my wife's heart, we bought Christmas for her and her little boy. And so now, so let me tell you what was happening. I feel the anointing hitting this place. Listen, the anointing of God just hit this place right there when I said that. Because, see, what God wants to do right now is bring an impartation of his compassion for people. What he wants to do right now, like he did to that church in North Florida, because we've been back several times, had a great move of God. He wants to do surgery on your heart. And, by the way, that church now is multicolored, multi-ethnic. We went back. It was full of all kind of people. Come on. It don't even look like the same place. They're on fire for God. They're doing something for the city. But what God had to do is go into the heart and do some surgery. See, what we don't realize is what we've been through up till now has caused layers of hardness. We don't even realize they're there. They just, all of a sudden, they're there. It didn't happen overnight. And we get to the place where we really don't care about people anymore. I mean, but really, let me tell you something. Nobody in this room can ever change this fact. You're headed to eternity. Nobody in this room can ever change the fact that everybody you see is headed to eternity. The only thing you're going to be able to do anything about is what you tell Jesus when you stand before him as a Christian. 